Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe InDesign CS2. I've loaded up an issue of the Riverdale Spectator, and we'll explore the interface first. Over on the left-hand side, I have my toolbox. At the bottom of the toolbox, I can go back and forth between displaying all of the tabs and rulers, columns, the layout guidelines in with each page as I flip through the pages. You can see the column layouts, the, the guidelines are in blue, the pink or purple are the column layouts. I can also see an object here that is off to the side that is not in the document itself. When I look at the page preview, it disappears because it's on the pasteboard. Um, I can flip to the last page first page or navigate to any page directly from the drop down list in the menu under the view fit the page in the window if I'm on a two page spread then I can fit the spread into the window zooming in and out there's two ways of doing that I can select the zoom tool and then wherever I click it zooms in on that when I'm too far out, you'll notice that it replaces the text with lines. I can zoom in. I can also select the percentage zoom. Or again, the easiest way, view fit page in window. Now, some of the tools that we'll be using, the select tool selects a frame. There are graphics and then there are, are text objects. They all go into frames. Some of the objects are in the foreground and some are on a master that is on each page. Now if we could take a look at the pages themselves, you'll notice that it'll list the pages here and then I've got an A master, B master, and then C master which might be just off screen. I've got three different masters. The first one is for the first page of the uh, Riverdale Spectator. The second one is the general background for pretty much every other page. And then the third master, C master, is a blank two-page spread. And that's usually for the, the center photo spread. Basically, the elements that are on these pages, you can change them. See how I can grab them. I could modify them. If I zoomed in on the masthead, for example, I might want to change the edition number, the date, the volume there. So I click on the text tool. I could then change that to a new value. And then it um, stays there. Now if I go back to the first page and scroll up to the top, you'll see that the date has been changed. I can't grab these elements, these background elements, because they're in the master that resides in the background. There are obviously elements that are in the foreground, and I can select those. Any object that's in the foreground, I can select those. I can also take explore the pages. I'm going to go over here to the page tab. You can see that um, page one uses the A master as its background. Pages two and three use the B master, and so do the pages four and five. The center spread, six and seven, uses the C master. I can change that. So all I have to do is I right click and say apply master pages and this is where I get to choose which master applies to which pages. I'm not going to do that now and I don't think you'll have a need for that. So every page has the B master except the center spread and the first page. If you can't find these palettes which reside on the right hand side, I pull them out by clicking on the, the tab, stroke, color, transparency, gradient. If you can't find them, then sometimes you can go to the window tab, sorry, the window menu, and you can find them here. There's the stroke. When I select it, it pops out. If I click on the tab, I can drag it 
somewhere else and then of course I can close it by closing it it disappears and that's when people have problems and they have to go looking for it so from the window stroke let's zoom in on this story and so we have a number of different text frames in here we have the title let's view see my, my columns there now the columns we'll discuss a little later on but there are five columns on this page this title spans the five columns I resize the frame can cut it off that little plus red plus sign means that there's text that ex extends beyond the frame so one of the ways to uh, see it all would be to expand the frame now it's not wrapping because um, there are other elements that get in the way but there is another frame for a subtitle I have this object over here which is several text objects that are grouped with a line and a frame that's solid black this is what we used for our byline and to edit it I can select the text tool and just change the name that's here I suggest you do the same thing just copy this grouped object now I could and I do not suggest it I can grab it I can select object ungroup and then I could work with each one individually I don't suggest you do that what I suggest you do is keep it grouped and just change the name and the title of the person that's um, writing with selecting the body copy a single click puts the uh, cursor inside frame double click highlights the word triple click highlights the line quadruple click highlights the paragraph five clicks copies everything the easiest way to copy everything though is to insert your uh, cursor and control a when you've got the text itself all of it you can use the character and paragraph tabs both of them are under the type menu character paragraph and then later on I'll show you tabs so I select all the text I can change the font AYT grotesque was my favorite body copy font it's simple um, in small sizes easy to read prints very well but I could change it to whatever I want changes all of the text here I can change the style you'll notice that some of it is regular and some of it's been italicized I have some titles typically the style that we used was that the title of a book or a song was italicized not in double quotes that'll be a major editing task I can change them all to regular change the size of the font typically as a rule never exceed size 10 for body copy I know that on the screen it might look too small but when it prints it will be enormous trust me here the, te the front page story was size 9 size 10 okay now if I go to size 9 the paragraph itself has a first line indent the left indent is zero uh, the first line I believe every the units that you're using will be picas so let me change that if you're using picas there are six picas in an inch a quarter of an inch would be one pica six or one and a half picas if I remove this and make it a zero there you can see all the first line tabs when you're editing your documents you in word format you basically want your writers to not put a tab at the beginning of each paragraph their paragraphs will consist of one possibly two sentences never more because you have control over the layout here one pika six for my first line indent and for spacing they've adjusted here at the beginning so prior to every paragraph there's a little bit of space I'm gonna remove that 
set it to zero, you'll notice that all the paragraphs are tightly put together. If you had an article that you need to expand it to fill up a little bit of space, go to this uh, piece right here. It's the spacing after each paragraph and increase it. You'll notice that every portion of a pika, it gives me a little bit of space and it spreads that article out. Then when you view it without all the lines, it still looks pretty good and the article has been expanded to fill the space that you have for it. I can play with that and that's a bit of a style thing. Standard rule of thumb is that you would like a one pica separation between all elements. In between columns there's exactly one pica. I can take a look at that because I go to the layout, margins and columns. There are the margins, there are five columns and the gutter between my columns is one pica zero. So one pica between each column which is standard in the publishing industry. You also want to maintain that when I view fit page in the window. All the elements in the page, I try and have a one pica separation between photos and the text, that the, the caption for the photos. Between all elements, you have that one pica gutter. I'm going to end that for this video because I've covered a lot. In the next video, I'll show you how to place text and graphics into a blank page.